Hello and good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll give a couple of minutes for more people to join. So let's hold the fire. Okay, good morning and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Jasmine. I'm the Marketing Manager for North America. Please join me in welcoming our presenters, David Goldschlag, our Senior VP of Strategy and CEO. And just one thing before we start, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type them in the chat window and we will address them during our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. And if you have any comments or feedback, please email us at info at pulsesecured.net. With that being said, here's David. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, good morning to everybody. Thank you for those of you on the West Coast. Thank you for starting so early. For those of you elsewhere, um, thank you for joining. Um, so what I'd like to do in the next half hour or so is talk through about 18 slides and talk about um, the new trend, right, that m m many of you are engaged, embarked on, which is the adoption of cloud services like email or Salesforce or Box um, as part of the services that your employees um, depend on to do their jobs. And the question is, is how do you enable employees to be productive but also manage the risk and the security of your applications and data for the enterprise. And so what we'll start to talk about here is how to have secure access for SaaS applications like Office 365 um, and place the security for those applications and for your enterprise data in the same context and policies as the security that you've had for access to premise-based applications like you had for Exchange when it ran on-premise or SAP or other applications that might run on-premise today. Um, what I'd also like to do is echo Jasmine. Please do um, add questions um, to, to as we go through, and I'll take those questions and address them um, after I go through the slides. Okay. So um, first, a little background on, on our company. Pulse Secure um, went private um, in October of 2014, so that's about a year and a half ago. Pulse Secure was the Pulse business unit of Juniper Networks, um, which had a large customer base, and we supported the customer base with remote access solutions like VPN to help enterprises connect their traveling employees. Um, to, to, to the corporate network, and also NAC to secure um, the, the data center, what, ask, what, what devices connect and make sure only secure devices can connect from on campus into the data center. Um, when Pulse Secure was launched, Pulse also acquired uh, my company, Mobile Spaces, which was a mobile enterprise mobile security company. So the portfolio that we have today, or that we launched with, was remote access solutions from Windows, Macs, iOS, and Android devices, and Linux devices to enterprise services with an increasing focus on mobility and mobile applications. Um, what we're talking about in the conversation today is further expansion of the portfolio, not only to access data center services, but to access SaaS services like Office 365 and Salesforce and Box. Um, today, a year and a half into the company, we are now 500 employees. Um, we have a global footprint. We have around 15,000 customers, um, and we have about 18 million end users, devices connecting in over the infrastructure to, to services. Um, the portfolio includes Pulse Connect Secure, which is the remote access product um, to the data center, and the VPN product. Pulse Policy Secure, which is NAC, securing access from the premise, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet to the data center. And Pulse Workspace, um, which is a foundation for the conversation today of how do you connect mobile applications both to the data center and to cloud services, SaaS services. 
Moving on to the next slide. Um, the old world was mainly the connecting of laptops from traveling users back to the data center where the VPN was a tunnel to get you through the data center perimeter. Okay? The new world is a world of hybrid IT. It's not only PCs and Macs, it's also iPhones and iPads and Android devices. And you're connecting to a mix of services, including the data center, of course, but also including private cloud tenancies in Azure and AWS, as well as SaaS services, like I mentioned, Office 365 and Salesforce and Box, and many, many others. And what's interesting here is the tunnel is not the main part of the secure access conversation. What you really need in this world of hybrid IT is you need the ability to tunnel to the data center, but you also need to know what services end users are accessing and from what devices. That's a visibility story. You need to know that they're only accessing these services from compliant managed devices. Otherwise, enterprise data will end up on unmanaged devices and you won't be protecting your own customers or your own proprietary information. You need to strongly authenticate users and based on the role of a user and the health of his device, you can decide what access he has. A user may have, unfinanced user may have access to financial systems. All users may have access to email. People may only have access to box from managed devices. So the story of this new hybrid world is the same security requirements of visibility, compliance, authentication, and access control that the VPN tunnel gave you in the old world, but it's applying to a larger set of services. And what I would like to show you over the next few slides is how to apply these same policies to govern access from a wider mix of devices to a wider mix of services using a similar policy system that you've been using to govern access from PCs and laptops to data center services in the past. So moving on to the next slide. Um, cloud and SaaS is huge. Okay, this is being adopted at all enterprises, the largest as well as the smallest enterprises. Cloud infrastructure spending is increasing. Um, the role of IT is changing in many cases to higher value services as opposed to building and operating um, applications that can be procured from the cloud. Um, the largest companies in addition to smaller companies are using Office 365. It's amazing to me in visiting my largest customers over the past year and a half, how many have gone from um, not using Office 365 to, use it to full deployments of Office 365 in just a year and a half. This has become a great business for Microsoft and it's dragging in other um, SaaS applications and other use of cloud services. So the reason I highlight Office 365 is once a customer is thinking of moving to, an enterprise is thinking of moving to email in the cloud, it shows that you've started to adopt cloud services in earnest. And oftentimes this, this is the first app, sometimes it's the second app. Salesforce has been in use at many enterprises for a long time, but also this is mainly the first app that touches each and every one of your employees because email is so central to the business. Okay, so to step a little bit here, the stories we're hearing, the use cases that we're hearing from our enterprise customers, again, large and small, is there's initiatives that are the IT initiatives that are changing the way that services are being deployed and the enterprise needs to accommodate and be able to secure its data and also provision users on these new services, manage the life cycle of users. So a big initiative is the migration of, Office 3, of Exchange to Office 365. That often includes moving SharePoint to the cloud as well, but mainly it's email from a variety of devices using the Outlook app on, on Windows and Macs and using native ActiveSync um, email clients on iPhones and Android devices. But the enterprise's primary concern here is they used to have strong control over what users, 
but more important, even as importantly, what devices we're connecting to Exchange. And when you go to Office 365, you can authenticate users, but oftentimes you can't ensure that only corporate managed devices where you can control that there's a passcode on the device and you can control that the device isn't jailbroken, for example, um, will get access to corporate email. And if you can't control what devices will get your corporate data, you don't have control over the leakage of your information from the server that you're trusting to the devices that are under the user's control. Another example would be Box. Box is a file share um, initiative at many enterprises. Often it's used for sharing within work groups, and often it's used to share between the company and partners or customers of the company. And a concern we see there is it's a great place to store the data, but you may want to let people get files from Box one by one from any device, but only let you sync the whole Box file store to manage devices. And so again, it's, it's a perception on the customer's part that they want control of their data and the enterprise wants to be able to limit where large amounts of enterprise data can be stored and then get the ability to delete that data, for example, if a device is lost or stolen or an employee leaves the company. Another example would be Salesforce, which is one of just many other um, SaaS applications. And Salesforce is a good example, standards-based, SAML-based access to Salesforce. Using a single sign-on approach, you can easily enable your users to authenticate to Salesforce, but you can't, again, ensure that only managed devices can connect to Salesforce. And you want to be able to do this in a way that scales not only for your first SAML app, but for the next 20 or 100 or 500 um, SaaS apps that you'll be deploying. So, the other reason I like to talk about this in terms of applications is customers, um, these, these efforts are significant and they're planned and the IT folks that we work with um, are, are engage this process um, in, in a thorough way and they're trying to build out infrastructures that'll support the initiative and also lay the foundation for supporting more apps over time. Okay, so a little bit. Enterprise apps, I'll use a screenshot here of an iPhone, but enterprise apps need to be easy for the user. Users are, like to work with services through applications on their device, whether it's a browser or an email app or the office suite, right, or Salesforce or Box. Users want to interact. They want to click on an app. They want to be able to share data between apps, and they want the apps just to work. They also want these apps to be provisioned to their device in a straightforward way and configured. And they don't want these apps to be interacting with the personal apps on their device because they want a sense of privacy, okay, and the enterprise gets control over the one enterprise data, but not over personal data. Um, also, it should be easy to use these apps. There shouldn't be a complicated authentication mechanism. But the contrast is, is from the enterprise's perspective, the enterprises need security. Just like the enterprise, the end user doesn't want the enterprise seeing his private data, the enterprise doesn't want business apps data being shared with personal apps. And the enterprise needs strong authentication, and the enterprise needs to be able to delete this data if a device is lost or stolen or an employee leaves the company. And the enterprise needs to be able to control access from these applications to the services. So for example, you may be using the Safari browser to get files from your intranet or to get to intranet web services. And that needs to be able to traverse the VPN. You may have an SAP app on the device and it needs to use the VPN to get to the data center. Or you may have Salesforce and email for Office 365 and that needs to be able to get to Office 365 and strongly authenticate the user and ensure the health of the device but still give the user easy access to the service. So kind of the challenge and the best way to be able to deploy security is where security enables the access, enables the user to do his job, and is invisible to the user or actually facilitates the user's um, work in what we call the happy path. Okay, so if the users use, if it's an authorized user from a managed device, clicking on the app should give them access to services. If, however, the user's not coming in from the right device, then the user may be challenged for an additional authentication. And the idea here is, is to, in the normal case, make the end user's job easier while 
ensuring that the enterprise's services in the cloud or the data center are secure and that the data, enterprise data, is secured on the device. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Apps need secure access. So the IT need is they need the IT guy needs to be able to deploy apps to mobile devices, and we should start to think that it's all about apps. On laptops and Macs, it's about browsers and a small set of thick apps. On mobile devices, smartphones, it's all about apps, thick apps, with a handful of services being accessed through browsers. The next thing is, is we need to be able to connect mobile apps to data center services. That means you need a transparent VPN that works for the apps that need a VPN and connect those apps to the data center. You need to be able to connect mobile apps to SaaS services. But just like you use a VPN not only as a tunnel, but to authenticate a user and ensure the health of a device, you need the same security for Office 365, but you don't necessarily want to tunnel through your enterprise. And finally, this needs to be easy for the user, and you need to respect the individual user's privacy of his personal information, but at the same time, the enterprise needs to secure its data, okay, and has a fiduciary responsibility to limit access to the data in the service, whether it's SaaS or data center, to authorize users from compliant devices, and to be able to protect enterprise data when it's residing on the device the user is using. Okay, so the challenges here are several. Let me go the first, the middle one first, password issues. Password issues are front and center. Just this morning, I got an email from my IT shop telling me I'll need to change my password within the next 13 days. Um, I'll have to go to my laptop and use a tool to change my AD password, and then I know that my email will stop syncing on the three or four other devices that I use until I bring that password um, up into um, sync with the new password that I just that I just did. And this I need to do every 60 days. Um, I'm a pretty sophisticated user. I make mistakes here. Password issues cost companies a lot of time and help desk money. One question is, is how can we add security and move away from passwords, but create, have stronger authentication, but at the same time reduce um, the burden on help desk and on users to make this more secure, but easier for the employee. And I'll show you some of that in, in next slides. Um, the second one is, is protecting against data leakage. The specific thing that we're concerned about is data from the enterprise um, data center or from the cloud should only be able to go to authorized users on authorized managed devices. Otherwise, the enterprise loses control of its data and you can't offer assurances that your HIPAA or PII information or your proprietary data is properly controlled. Again, the happy path um, should govern here that the user who's coming in from doing his job from his device should be able to get access to data and he shouldn't um, need to know that there's security um, on in that process. But what you want to do is prevent um, an unmanaged device or, or a, a person who stole a credential from being able to get access to the data. And of course, SaaS adoption is, is a primary vector here where not only email but other apps are moving to SaaS. And how do you bring those applications into the same um, policy umbrella that lets you um, manage your, your, the integrity and security of your data um, across all of the employees' devices? Okay. The solution here is to protect enterprise data and simplify user access to Office 365 and other SaaS applications. Um, one of the goals we hear from our customer base is access to SaaS apps should be limited to authorized users coming from managed devices where those devices um, satisfy certain basic security controls. So for instance, you may want to ensure that your iOS device, your iPhone, has a passcode. Um, you may want to be sure that your Android device is not rooted. You may want to ensure that your Windows device um, has antivirus on it. Okay. Um, you also want to eliminate passwords for email and access to SaaS applications. Um, this is really important because passwords, as I talked about, are both inconvenient to the user and they're insecure for the enterprise and they generate expensive help desk calls during the year. Finally, you want to make apps that the user needs to use 
easily available to him. So users should, when they enroll their device, should get the applications for their basic services, email, contacts, calendar, and their higher end services, file sharing, um, sales applications, financial applications, um, the specific line of business applications, and these should just um, occur and be on the device, okay? Um, the solution that we offer here is called Cloud Secure. Cloud Secure is an extension of our ability to, to ensure secure access to data center services using the VPN, but allowing the same security to occur for access to applications in the cloud, to SaaS applications. A specific requirement we're hearing from enterprises is once the user authenticates, to Office 365, the apps on his device should be able to talk directly to Office 365 and not need to tunnel through the enterprise. So there's several different models here, but a primary model that we're hearing from customers is use the tunnel to get to the data center for data center applications like SAP, but use the enterprise to authenticate users for Office 365 and Salesforce and um, Box, but then let the device, the browser or the application on the device connect directly um, to those services after you authenticate. So the solution topology that we have here is when a user clicks on email for Office 365 on his device, he gets authorized to connect to Office 365 by his enterprise because the enterprise, the Pulse Secure appliance in the enterprise is the one that decides whether a user is authorized and the device is healthy. But once authorized, the app, the email app on the device gets to connect to Office 365 directly. So the enterprise is not carrying more traffic than it needs. And the enterprise is also not introducing any latency on the connection. So you can leverage the internet for the connectivity between the device. But of course, if you click on SAP on the device, it'll go over the tunnel and it'll go to SAP in the data center. So you get to leverage the data center for authentication and compliance, and then you let the device connect directly to the cloud. Let me give not a demo, but some screenshots. If you're using the OneDrive app, the one on the left on your iPhone, and OneDrive will then authenticate to, um, wants to connect to Office 365, that's kind of, this is the file sharing app that's part of Office 365. The flow works like this. You click on the app and you see a a, a page that says sign in. You click on sign in, and at that point, the user experiences, he types in his corporate email address. And in this case, you see I typed in David G at pssonet um, And then I click next. What happens here is in behind the scenes is uh, OneDrive requests from um, the enterprise um, to validate that David G, that user, is authorized to use OneDrive. And um, that happens through a SAML redirect, and then the enterprise's um, IDP will, running on the Pulse Secure appliance, will verify that this is indeed David G coming from that device, and that the device is properly managed and is not jailbroken, whatever the security requirements are and then produce the SAML assertion and go back to OneDrive. And OneDrive will then let the OneDrive app access Office 365 OneDrive in the cloud. And then you'll see the third screen, which shows you the files that you have access to. And all that, there's no additional step between the sign-in step where you type your email address and access to the service. The strong auth was taken care of through a certificate that we've put on the device and device compliance and user rights were determined by inspecting the device and determining the role of the user using that certificate that was put on that device that represents the user and the device. So what we're trying to show you here is the user experience is as simple as he could get. He signs in with his email address. He doesn't have to type his password because the password is replaced with a strong authorization token, the certificate. And the enterprise has confidence that not only is the user properly and strongly authenticated, but the device is strongly authenticated and the device is compliant and it's a safe place for enterprise data to, to, um, to be stored on. What's interesting here is the alternative, which would require you to type in your password along with your email address, would get you to 
Office 365, but would not determine the health of the device and would not prevent credential theft if somebody stole your password from getting to Office 365 from another device. So here you have less burden on the user and more security for the enterprise. So the solution for Cloud Secure provides secure single sign-on to cloud services. It works across browsers, across all devices, Windows, Macs, iPhones, Android devices. It works across thick apps on, multiple, on those devices as well, including Outlook on Windows and Macs and native email on iOS and Android, and Salesforce and Box and the Office apps across all of those devices. As I pointed out, it requires no password, and it replaces a password with a user device-specific certificate, so you get strong authentication with no need for password changes, and you get a device compliance check as part of the solution. And of course, because there's centralized authentication here, you get visibility into what users are accessing what services from what devices, and you can apply um, policies that say what users are allowed to go where, what the health of the device needs to be, and contextual policies like location and time of day. Some of the benefits here is you're able to use the SaaS services like you want. You have a similar policy framework like you had for access to data center services. You can ensure not only the user authenticates, but the device is compliant with policies. And you eliminate a password in favor of a device-specific certificate that gets you strong off with the better user experience. This all works to make it easy for the end users to let him use a BYOD device, which mixes personal and work apps without mixing the data from those apps, and lets you leverage your existing policy infrastructure, both for user auth and device compliance, so you have a unified policy framework for data center as well as for cloud access. Looking at the overall architecture, the Pulse Secure architecture today includes Policy Secure, which is the VPN infrastructure to get to the data center, um, to secure access from the campus to the data center for NAC. Connect Secure, which is the VPN infrastructure to connect to the data center from remote, uh, from the internet. And Cloud Secure, which is the logical gate to get to SaaS services. The distinction I want to make here is Connect Secure is a tunnel, but Cloud Secure is a authorization decision of whether the user and the device are authorized. And then once a Cloud Secure makes that decision, access occurs directly from the device to the cloud because we don't want to introduce latency or availability concerns for use of cloud services. All of this is governed through the Pulse One Management Council, which understands user identity through our integration with Active Directory and is able to establish um, role-based conditional access policies and can be managed through um, the EMM, which we call Workspace, which is used to deploy um, um, apps to devices and provision or deprovision devices and wipe, user, wipe, wipe enterprise data from user devices when necessary. Um, cloud security. Um, needs to support the hybrid enterprise. So kind of stepping back from this old world to new world, the connectivity options that you need, the access options that you need in your enterprise today include users who are traveling or users working remotely, as well as users working on campus, and that's the left column. And they need to be able to access services that are within the enterprise or services that are in the cloud. And within the Pulse portfolio today, we can accommodate all of these um, access mechanisms under a single policy umbrella. So for example, if you're going from outside remote access to the data center, that's Connect Secure, that's our VPN. If you're connecting from on campus to the data center, that's Policy Secure, that's NAC. If, however, you're connecting from outside to SaaS services like Office 365, that's Cloud Secure. And similarly, if you're internal to the network going to SaaS services, that's Cloud Secure. From the user's perspective, this is all seamless. Um, you get a single identity, single compliance rules, um, and you get strong auth to your services. But the enterprise has assurance that only authorized users for managed devices can connect. Here's some additional pointers, okay, toward um, 
toward um, more product information. And at this point, um, I'll hand um, the conversation back to Jasmine and we'll um, walk with, um, we'll talk about um, some of the audience questions. Thank you so much, David. That was very educational and lots of information. And we got some great questions as well. So first question is, do I need to deploy a certificate authority for single sign-on? Um, so the workspace solution, thank you, Jasmine. The workspace solution um, does not require a certificate authority because workspace contains a certificate authority as part of the solution. So we simplify the enterprise's life by be having a closed loop system from which certificates um, can can be deployed, okay? Um, and, and the enterprise does not have to go through the complexity of deploying its own certificate authority. Thank you. So second question, we currently use MAGS to secure a network. Will Workspace and Cloud Secure work with them as well? Yeah, so we can, you can do, leverage um, MAGS as well as the new PSA appliances to um, for mobile access to the data center as well as cloud secure um, secure access to SaaS services um, as long as the MAG has been updated to the newest version of the software. Thank you. How is cloud secure different from CAS? CASBs. Okay, so CASBs are used um, to monitor or get visibility into what data is uploaded to SaaS services. Um, Pulse Secure's portfolio, Cloud Secure and VPN and NAC, is used to ensure that enterprise data only ends up on secured devices, on managed devices. So really they're solving two halves of the larger end-to-end -end problem, you know, what, whether you want to monitor what data is ending up in the SaaS service that's a CASB um, function, or you want to control that and only properly managed devices can connect to um, SaaS services, um, that's the um, Pulse Secure side of the solution. Thank you. So how does this solution compare to Centrify? So Centrify um, is a single sign-on solution, okay? And single sign-on solutions um, let you consolidate all of your authentication decisions so that when you go to a service like Office 365 or Salesforce or Box, okay, um, the, the service doesn't make the authorization decision, rather it refers back to Centrify or Ping or Okta or Microsoft Azure Active Directory and says, you tell me whether the user is authorized and then give me a token, a SAML assertion that will let that user then log into the enterprise. So it delegates authentication um, checks to, um, to the single sign-on vendor, okay? Um, the, the limitation of a single sign-on vendor is they only check user auth. So it makes the user um, life simpler because there's only one username password to get into all these services, but you're not checking for the identity or health of the device. And it's really the combination of user identity and device identity and device health that enterprises wanna do when they do access to, um, to services, whether they're in the data center or the cloud. Um, the reason that's important is one, like I spoke before, that you don't want enterprise data to end up on unmanaged devices because that may not be um, by policy. The other one is, is credential theft. If somebody steals your password, they can get, and you're not doing um, a device identity, device check, then they can get into the service from any device. So somebody fishes for passwords, all of a sudden those passwords are usable by the bad guy from his machine. If, however, you're checking user identity and device identity, then credential theft becomes a much less important issue because the password can't be used except from um, authorized devices. So we're finding that both for data security and credential theft, um, enterprises want to be able to include device identity and device compliance um, in the authorization decision. Thank 
you. So with this work with our current MDM solution, Mobile Iron, or replace it? Yeah, so we can interoperate with um, Mobile Iron or AirWatch or other MDM solutions. You can let, it, and War Workspace can, can replace it. But let me talk about the interoperability case. In that case, um, Mobile Iron would be used to manage your devices. Mobile Iron would deploy the apps. Mobile Iron could even deploy a certificate, okay? And our um, VPN infrastructure, as well as Cloud Secure, would be able to use um, and let those devices connect in, check the user identity and the certificate validity, and check the compliance status of the device based on what Mobile Iron knows and what we know about the device, and then be able to connect to data center and to cloud services. So both our VPN infrastructure and our NAC infrastructure and our SaaS cloud secure infrastructure work with um, third-party MDMs like Mobile Iron and AirWatch. Thank you. So it seems like that is the end of our questions. And if anybody from the audience have any last minute questions, please feel free to chat them in. And David, did you have any last words to say before we wrap up here? So I really appreciate everybody's time um, here. Um, we'd love to follow up um, with, with, with questions or demos, okay? Um, and, and, um, and we'd love to be able to um, help you support um, your larger um, access needs as you start to include SaaS services in um, your portfolio of line of business applications. Thank you, everybody, for your time this morning. So it seems like we have one more question. How is this different from mobile iron access? So there's a variety of, of um, solutions that are coming out to support access to um, SaaS services, okay, um, from, from several vendors, okay. Um, many of these, um, not, let me answer more generally, many of these put a gateway between the user and the SaaS service, which has availability and latency concerns. And many of these um, are limited to a small set of SaaS services. Our design goal here has been to separate authentication and device compliance from, um, from the path, the tunnel that you use to get to the SaaS service so that you can get centralized um, policy management without requiring data to route through the enterprise. Okay, and our other requirement has been that we'd introduce no dependency on the SaaS service or the application provided they're SAML ready. Um, so we, we've built an ecosystem here that's neutral, okay, and lets you work with, with hundreds of SaaS applications, um, as well as lets you take advantage of the, um, of the internet as the, as the, as the path between the device and, um, and the SaaS service, okay, instead of adding latency and availability concerns by routing the data through the enterprise. Thank you so much, David. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And please check back here for the on-demand video. And we have upcoming webinars next week and happening all the time. So please check back, and you'll be sure to get an email from us. And David, thank you so much once again for having us here and for everything you've shared with us. And everyone in the audience, if you could please give us some feedback, that would be greatly appreciated. Have a beautiful rest of your day and week. And David, thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.